So yesterday, my teammate Guillermo Cava Nunez shared this link in our Titan Slack, and it's picture in picture, but not just for video. And if you've never worked with it before, we've had the ability for a little while to do picture in picture where you pop just a video out and that video kind of gets its own little separate window that persists even when you switch over to a different program, browser, tab, whatever else it is, it still stays there. Uh, but that was video only. And apparently we just got the ability in the latest version of most browsers to also have picture in picture for other things. And those other things could be a video player that has a lot more controls and context around it, but it also could be something else. And I really wanted a chance to play with it. So I made something fun. Uh, let's take a look. You can see in this example here that what they showed was the idea of a video player that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, they also gave an example down at the bottom of the article about how you might want to have a timer that's running all the time. And those are really great ideas. But the first thing that popped to my mind was those persistent chat windows that so many people have had to build on their own, where you have a chat window that's docked and you want to leave and you want it to stay in its own little window. So you click a little button and the chat window pops out to a separate window. And I thought maybe we can use this for that. So here we have our app and we click on the chat window and everything works. And then we pop it out. And now we're using this new picture in picture option. And so it's popped out. It's an entirely separate window. And we move to something else. Let's say Apple music. We still have it accessible even when we're clicking through to another app. So let's learn real quick how to do it. Everything I'm going to teach you here is just from that same Google article. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you what it works like a little bit. So we've got a much simpler version here. We've got our picture in picture content and we've got a button to trigger switching to picture in picture mode. Everything's wrapped in a player container and we've got two items here. We've got this div that represents the content that will be moved into the picture in picture window and we've got the button to trigger it. And obviously you could trigger this in JavaScript using not the button, but this is the way that they do it in the Chrome article. So I wanted us to do it that way. So let's copy the JavaScript directly from the article and take a look at what it does. We grab our pip button by using the automatically generated object in the global scope, just based on it having an ID. We add a click listener that grabs the content of the player that will be moving from our DOM into the pip window. We grab an instance of a pip window, and then we move the player into the body of the pip window. So let's try it out. And there we go. You can see it's no longer in the original DOM. It is in the pip window DOM. However, two problems. First of all, when we go back in, it doesn't come back. And second of all, when we go over there in the first place, it loses all your styles. And those are two easy to handle things that they address in the article as well. Again, this is all just copied directly from that article. We want to add a listener that says when this pip window is hidden, has this page eyed event, which basically means it's dismissed. We want to grab the pip, the player, which is like the content we moved there. And we want to append it back in to the original item. We actually might want to prepend. So when we quit, page height event goes back into the DOM. And the last thing is, let's grab the styles. Once again, this is something that I got just directly from the article. You could set the styles yourself if you want it in JavaScript, or you can just use this snippet of code, which copies all the style sheets that are referenced in your parent and duplicates them all into the pip window. So now when we hit click me, we get all the same original styles just like we want. There's a few other settings you can change. You can define whether or not this back button is going to exist. You can define the size you want everything to be. You can listen for events that are happening and do all sorts of other fun JavaScript stuff. But I wanted you to see what we have available to us in Chrome, Edge, and Opera, and hopefully all the other modern browsers will come along soon. Enjoy.